Yeah, okay. Uh, welcome to my lightning talk and thank you for choosing to spend your next 10 minutes listening to me state what might seem to be obvious for a lot of you guys or girls. But I hope that you will uh, bring with you something that is itching in the back of your head the next time you either submit or review somebody else's code. Or maybe just start a thought process of how you think about these kind of things. But before we dive in, let me introduce myself. My name is Eirik Isna. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that well in English. But loosely translated, Eirik is not rich. And Isna is the plural form of ice cream or ice. Or we can just go with the Norse version, which is eternal ruler. I'm just putting that out there. Uh, so my day to day, I work for Itera. Be sure to catch Anders Ludos' talk at 420. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, I can guarantee you that. So I'm a developer for Itera, and I also love food. This is me eating some of the best pizza in town with my team. It's a shame NDC is virtual, as as I was really looking forward to snacking in the conference area, as I'm sure a lot of you also were. I also enjoy coffee a lot, but this slide might have been for a Java Zone. Sorry, my bad. Let's skip on ahead. So why are code reviews so important? Um, well, for me at least, uh, when it comes to work, my list of priorities is as follows. It's great colleagues, because I love having to discuss with people, and that's how I think. I think out loud, I like discussing with people and, finger, uh, and figuring, figuring out if my idea is good or just plain terrible, or maybe getting some input on how it could be, be better. And great colleagues are good for this. Also great challenges, because it's always fun to be challenged at, uh, at something that I know nothing about, but that I'm certain I might be able to figure out before losing the rest of my hair, which is not an awful lot. Uh, also great food, but not really that important for this talk. But the two first points here are great colleagues and great challenges, and they can be summarized as the need to constantly evolve as a developer. Uh, and, and, and I'm sure a lot of you can also agree on this, that it is important for you to go to work every day and feel like you learned something new. And it's all, all about the feeling you get when you look back at your code from maybe a, a couple of months ago or longer and think, what the hell was I thinking when I was programming this code? I know so many better ways to, to, to do it now. And that is a good sign. It is a terrible feeling when you're experiencing it, but it just means one thing. You have developed as a developer, you have evolved, and you are now able to see it from another perspective, which could have made the code better in the first place. So I owe to all of you to feel that as often as possible, even though it is a terrible feeling to have in the moment. So what can we uh, accomplish with a code review? There are a lot of answers to this, but I believe I can sum them up in three basic points. First of all, we distribute responsibility. Uh, so that when things, yes, I say when things crash in production, it's not one single person's fault. As the previous uh, lightning talk, uh, about it's terrible to have the responsibility on your shoulders when something goes wrong. So it's good to be able to distribute that among your key members and own it together. The second thing is distribution of information. It lets us see this from a bird's eye view. Uh, how do we uh, know what's going on in the other parts of our code base or in other applications we also interact with? Well, we can have a look at pull requests of our team members as they submit them. So this also helps us uh, make the bus factor higher, which is the minimum number of people that have to be hit by a bus before the project goes sideways. So increasing this number is always a good thing. And we can do this with code reviews. And the third part, which I am focused on here, is the distribution of skill. Because this is a great arena for us to have good discussions about good ways to do things. Uh, not only pick on all the small things, but bigger thoughts in the process and how we can solve a problem at the best possible way. But what exactly is the problem? So the thing is with written language that we are really easily tempted to dehumanize other people because we do not see the other cues such as eye contact, tone of voice, and hands and other gestures, which make the message that come across a lot more clear in what it is meant to say. But words uh, easily create uh, another yeah, uh, problem, because I will ask you, have you ever been in an argument? Probably, yes. Uh, but have you ever been in an argument in maybe a pull request, a comment section on a news article, or at least observed arguments? Uh, we're all probably, uh, we all probably know that there's no point in actually competing in these uh, competitions because you always lose anyway. 
but I'm sure a lot of you have observed a lot of uh, emails gone wrong, a lot of comment sections gone wrong. And this also happens in pull requests and code reviews if there are two ideas that are fighting against each other without having a good tone of voice. And another question is, have you ever felt criticized when you submit a pull request? Have you submitted a pull request with some code that you are really proud of only to find that nobody actually notices those nice pieces of code you have written, but instead start pointing out all the things you could have done a lot better. And the thing uh, about this is it's easy for the head to understand. I can completely intellectually agree with a lot of the points being made, but still my heart says, ah, you're a bad coder. You've made a mistake. Why did you, you, did you do this? And this happens because uh, I become attached to my code. This is the work I have produced. And we as proud developers are proud of our work. So it might hurt to see that our code is criticized when actually it is meant to, to help us develop and become better programmers. But how can we solve these kind of things without, uh, yeah, how can we solve these kind of things, uh, seeing that the format is a written format and we are reviewing code the way we are? Well, we'll start with a few basic things. First of all, we can start by agreeing on a way of doing things, because if you have a set of rules to adhere to, it's a lot easier to see that you are not doing things correctly because uh, you have yourself agreed to a way of, of doing things. I'm talking about how you format commit messages how you submit pull requests, and even all the way down to how you lint your code, maybe even how you name your variables. Because if you have rules for this, these things are much harder to accept when somebody comments that something is wrong. Uh, and the rule here is this short, nice, uh, a, a nice acronym we, hear, we have here, Tim Toady Bicarbonate. There is more than one way to do it, but sometimes consistency is not a bad thing either. So it doesn't really matter exactly what you agree on as long as you agree on it. And the second part is get rid of all the nitpicking because the rules we agreed on in the first point are often things that start to, to, to get nitpicked on. Uh, people start picking on the way you maybe committed your uh, code, the way you named things, the way you linted things. And all of these things can a lot of these things, at least, we can get rid of by introducing commit hooks, for example, or other ways to automate away a lot of these things. And this helps us remove all the, all the noise from a code review and actually focus on the thing that is there to be reviewed, the code and the solution to the problem at hand. And that brings us to the third step, to communicate as a team. And there are many ways to do this, and a lightning talk is way too short to, to actually talk about this. But I'm going to bring up uh, a few points that I think a lot of you maybe have thought about. And if not, this might be a good time to start. Uh, because the language we use is uh, will shape the way we view things. So for starters, we can start trying to get rid of all the possessive pronouns, such as mine, your, uh, me and you, and try to re replace them with words that create a common ownership to the code. If we talk about our code and we need to fix this, uh, we should have another way of doing this. Then we can start viewing the code as a thing in itself and distance ourselves from it as, as individuals, but look at it together as a team, which is, I, uh, I believe, uh, a really good way of doing this. And as a reviewer, don't just state things, but ask questions. If you are wondering, why something is as it is as it is or 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 think something is bad then ask a question about it having to formulate things as a question opens up discussion for yourself and others and invites them to come with their answers and views of things and it also uh yeah and it and also forces you to think about why you actually uh, view this point differently by forcing you to formulate a question that also contains what you are wondering about. As the review, the reviewee, try to point out the uncertainties, point out the parts of the code that you are uncertain of or that are critical sections. If you know that there is a part of your code that might be fragile, then point out what that is and uh, and ask a question, opening up, opening it up for discussion and input from other people. Um, this is also a good way to involve uh, involve 
involve others and also easily take feedback because you yourself have invited it. And it, it, and it is also allowed to review your own code. You don't have to rely on your team members for doing that. You can also review your own code as if somebody else submitted it, which I believe is a good practice because it also helps you view the code as something in itself. And the last point I have time for is give compliments. There is so much good code out there that it does not get acknowledged and does not get the, the, the compliment it deserves. And it is a huge motivational factor for me, and I know a lot of you other people, when you receive a compliment on something that you've done, it just motivates to become better and to do better all the way. The, the recent day, uh, a colleague actually took the time to call me up on Teams only to give me a compliment on the way I had implemented something. And that really gave me a boost for the rest of the week. So I'd encourage you to keep on giving compliments as you review other people's code. So to sum it all up, it's all about reviewing the code and not reviewing the coder. And I believe we can use our language and think about how we review code to help accomplish that. So thank you very much for listening.